In this video, we'll look at a typical example of creating and documenting a machine part using SOLIDWORKS. We begin by sketching a profile for the base of our machine part. Familiar sketching tools are available to us, such as lines, arcs, rectangles, splines, and many more. Patterning tools are also available to us, such as mirror. We don't have to worry about the size of the profile as we sketch it, as it will resize itself correctly when we add constraints such as dimensions. We can then extrude it to the correct depth. Next, we add some fixing holes. As you can see, we have a large library of holes to select from, including counter bores, counter sinks, tapped holes, clearance holes, and more. We simply choose the hole type we want and position them where we want them. We add another rectangular extrude before sketching this profile on the side face. I'll sketch a circle concentric with the radius above it. Again, we'll extrude it to the required depth. Next up, we'll add an M8 tapped hole around the bore on a PCD of 105 millimeters. We have a large variety of patterning tools available. Here I use circular pattern to define how many instances of the hole very quickly. I'll go with four. I now need to add a recess to the bore. Rather than sketching out every feature required, it's possible to build a library of commonly used features that crop up between multiple designs. Here I have a recess with port library feature saved. I simply drag it onto my part, key in a few dimensions, and that's my recess complete. Another patterning tool available is Mirror. I can choose to mirror all the features that make up the triangular boss. We continue to build the model using similar tools to before, and I finish the model with the number of fillets. That's our model almost complete. We now need to apply a material. We have a large library of materials that we can select from. I'll choose AISI 1020. The material properties applied will allow me to calculate an accurate weight, and I can even run a simulation on the part to see how it react under a force or pressure. We now move on to creating the technical drawing. As you can see, the orthographic views are created automatically for me. I just need to place them in my drawing sheet. I can add hole callouts and it will present the information clearly. I can also add dimensions. These are correct as per the model and not affected by the scale of the sheet. It's also possible for us to bring through the dimensions we use to construct the model. SOLIDWORKS does a great job of laying them on the views with minimal amount of tidy up required. I can create section views and detail views in just a few clicks. I'll just add a few dimensions here. Inevitably, designs change. Here's where SOLIDWORKS really comes into its own. We need to increase the thickness of the triangular boss. We can just select the dimension controlling the thickness and drag it. You can see the model update live on the screen. We'll also increase the tapped hole count around the bore from four to six. That's how change is complete. The great thing with SOLIDWORKS is it's associative. So any changes you make to a part will automatically propagate to wherever it's used, whether it be a drawing or an assembly. If we switch back to the drawing, you can see all the drawing views have automatically updated with the changes we've made, as of the dimensions and callouts. This means your drawings are always going to be accurate and it will help eliminate errors that are often incurred during the change procedures. So to summarize, we can create models quickly using intuitive sketch tools and features. We can save commonly used features as library features for reuse. We can easily modify our design by typing or dragging dimensions. Orthographic drawing views are created automatically 
and dimensions and callouts can be imported from the model. Section views and detail views can be created in a few clicks. SolidWorks drawings are associative. If the model changes, the drawing views automatically update and therefore drawing views are less prone to error. Thank you for watching.